just finished a technical interview and I'm going to share with you what happened, how it went and the questions that they asked me. So this finished about five minutes ago, so as promised, here I am, um, and it went well. I think it went pretty well. I was able to build up a nice rapport with the engineers. It was myself against, not against, but myself and four other engineers. And, you know, they were scattered around the country. So, you know, we kind of opened up a bit of conversation about that. Uh, spoke about why I'm interested in, in the role, why I'm looking for the role, which, of course, discussed previously. I am jobless, so looking for a role. And, and yeah, so it, it opened up with some nice banter. And then it was almost like we clicked a button and we're like, right, we're in quiz mode and now. And they came at me with some questions, which I was expecting and that I spoke about before. And that was going to happen. And I answered them to the best of my ability. I didn't use any tools um, during the interview, obviously. I know that's becoming a bit of a thing. Old Zuckerberg put a thing in out the other day saying about it but yeah no I went from pure experience and pure knowledge like historical knowledge of what I've learned uh, to answer the questions but overall to sum up the interview um, I think it went well you know I came away with a feeling of hey do you know what I think I might actually get this job this would be nice and um, and fingers crossed I find out I'm gonna no, no, sorry fingers crossed I get it I am gonna find out hopefully either later today or over the weekend so fingers crossed for that one and um, yeah what I'm going to do now is share the questions that they asked and I'm actually going to try and answer them again how I answered them during the interview so I was able to like take notes of what it was that was being said um, but I didn't take notes of my answers if that makes sense so we'll go we'll go through this it's just a bit of fun really um, I'll read them out like question one question two and then I'll tell you kind of like how I approached it and um, if you're interested or you just fancy fancy it to be honest why don't you comment you can add a like leave a comment put the question number and then how you would have answered it or you know even if you just want to have a conversation about it um, or understand a little bit better why I said something because you know this is this is for a bit of fun, but also it might help someone. So it's a uh, it's a good thing all around. So without without further ado, Kubernetes and GitOps. I I, I subtitled them, like sectioned them up. Question one: um, Your team. I'm reading these just off my notes. So uh, your team is running multiple microservices in GKE. You're using Argo CD to manage deployments through GitOps. A developer says their changes were merged into Git, but nothing is being updated in the cluster. How would you debug this? So I feel like there was a couple of like key phrases or key points in there. So you got GKE, so it's running on Google, running Kubernetes. Cool. But that's probably not the problem because it's not made it that far yet. Uh, they're using GitOps to deploy it and Argo CD is their deployment tool. So, okay, cool. So we're looking at potentially either a, Git, a GitHub or GitLab problem uh, or an Argo CD problem. So it says they've merged those changes in, into Git. So I'm so gonna assume that, you know, they meant into like main or the master branch or even their feature branch, doesn't actually say, um, but nothing is being updated in the cluster. So my first port call would be to check any pipelines, like GitHub Actions pipelines, for example. And if they are, uh, they were they were vague. So I made sure that when I was explaining my question or explaining my answer, I said, if you are using GitHub Actions, this is how I would approach it. So I would kind of like narrow down on a particular particular way of debugging a scenario like this. So yeah, I'd, I'd approach the GitHub Actions and review the pipeline, see if there's any like anything that has failed there. Um, there could be a case of they're using Argo CD manual sync as part of the pipeline and the pipeline's failed. Or there could be a dependency on a check that has failed, which has stopped it from going out. So there are a couple of issues on that side. Uh, equally, I would look at Argo CD and just review the application and see if there's any error logs in the UI. 
So that way I'm kind of covering it both bases um, with the limited information that I have. So that was okay. That was question one. You can see how this easily became an hour long interview. Question two. If Argo CD sees a change but is stuck in syncing, not progressing, what would you do? So same thing. If it's stuck in syncing, that means that it's definitely gone into, it's in GitHub, GitHub um, GitLab, right? It's in the source code. So I would go straight over to Argo CD and have a look at the UI. And I just, I like Argo CD UI. I find it quite informative. That's why I use it. Um, I, if it's looking, if it's stuck in syncing state, typically I would locate the application or the app of apps, depending on what the configuration is. And then I would also go into it. And normally on the top right, if there's a stuck in sync in there, it provides an error. You know, in the top right, big red error, you can click on that and it will give you um, sort of like some feedback on what the problem is. A lot of times there is YAML syntax problems or potentially like the path does not exist. So that's, uh, that's how I would approach that. Question number three. Uh, let's say the logs show a crash loop back off for one of the pods. What are your next steps to figure out why the pod isn't starting properly? Um, again, nice and vague. I would either jump into Argo CD and have a look at the logs uh, of the pod, because you can see like any you know scheduled pods or anything like that. You can see the logs through the UI, which is why Argo is pretty good. Uh, equally, I would jump into the terminal, kubectl, uh, have a look at events, have a look at pod logs, container logs. Um, and just see what's going on, see if there's any, any information in, in the logs there. Normally, um, it will come back and it'll give you something, some kind of indication, whether it's a typo in like the image or something like that. But that's, that's how I would approach it. Question number four, still Kubernetes and GitOps. Uh, if the Im image tag and memory look fine, but the pod shows unable to connect to database, what would you check next? Again, like this is a super vague question. So I would um, just put some assumptions in there. So I'm going to assume that you're using G GK, so you're using Google, um, and potentially using like Cloud SQL. Now, a connection between uh, Kubernetes and, sorry, there's a bug there, connection between uh, Kubernetes, GK, and Cloud SQL can be managed between a cloud proxy, uh, Google Cloud. Google Cloud Proxy, which is a small service that you can set up. And I would check the check to see if that was in place. If it is in place, I would check to check the authentication. I would make sure that the pod has the service account annotations that it requires if it's using like workload identity. And then I would also check that it has the permission. So authentication and authorization. That would be my approach. Equally, I would also do another quick check to make sure the database exists and the database is up. That's how, that's how I would go about it. So the next section is secrets. Um, and they use, or the, the, the question anyway, was focused on Vault. So you're rolling out a new microservice using Argo CD. It needs secrets from Vault. How would you securely provide those secrets to the app and what tools or patterns would you use? So uh, again, Argo CD is like, it's great, it's kind of irrelevant to the question. What we're actually asking here is um, how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna manage the microservice, how the microservice is gonna get the values from Vault. So if they've got Vault deployed, um, it's probably uh, safe to assume that they're using some kind of like auto unseal, you know, potentially using Google KMS, uh, that's how I would set it up. And then with the seal, the auto seal done, we can move that to the side. It's how we're going to inject the values from Vault into the pod. And I know Vault offers a uh, auto injection um, add-on, which is managed through a annotation in the pod or the deployment. So yeah, that's, that's how I would approach that. I would make sure that the annotation um, was, was declared it's got the correct path for Vault and that the, that the pods and application have the correct permissions 
to access vault. So correct roles, roles to path, uh, and read, which is all they should need really. On that on that question, um, the same app. Okay, so it's like a follow-on. Sorry, question six. The same app starts failing on restart, and the vault secrets aren't showing up. How would you troubleshoot them? So again, I would check the paths, uh, make sure the path exists in Bolt, make sure the role exists in Bolt, make sure the path is declared correctly in the annotation. If all that is correct, um, I potentially would try and uh, connect to the pod, the container, and see the variables myself to see if they're actually being rendered correctly. And I would also check the values of the, the secrets and the variables to make sure they're the ones that are supposed to be. Because also there's the potential that you know it's actually the wrong value in Vault. Easy. <laughs> when you say it out loud, right? Um, and that was it. So last question. Um, so the, I can only remember seven questions. There may have been some more. I think I've just remembered one. Um, I'll try and come back to it. Uh, so this was more about general, general approach to things. So uh, the front end is slow. And there you, you have the front end, the back end, and data. But there is no cloud, no Kubernetes involved, and you have no logs. So there's no like logs to find, no, no sort of like, no metrics, no tools. You have nothing. You just have information saying that this isn't loading correctly. How would you troubleshoot it? And um, this is super vague. And I would, I took this as they're just trying to see how my brain would work with a technology that I don't. And necessarily have first-hand experience with. So I just went in and was like, if I had access to the code, and this is something that I can run locally, I would start, I would just try and run it locally and run it in debug mode and go through it line by line until I was able to repro the error. If I could repro the error and uh, like reproduce it, then I could start debug, then I could start troubleshooting the error from there. But until I'm able to reproduce it, identify the root cause, there's not a lot else I could do. And that was kind of like my response. I was like, look, I don't, I have no information, but what I can do is run it locally and I can run it line by line and just see, see if there's you know something wrong, something obviously wrong. And that was it. Um, was there any other questions? There was a quick one actually. It was like, what was the difference? between git merge versus git rebase, which is one that always trips me up because like, you know, typically, um, especially when I run in CLI, it's just not something I run on a regular basis because I try to be as careful as possible that I don't have to do stuff like that. But um, what is it? A rebase adds it onto the end of your change. A merge merges the changes together. I think that's right. Don't quote me on that because I might be getting it wrong again. Um, but yeah, that one is just always, it's just one of them things. Like I, I work with one guy, he was like a Git CLI wizard. I don't, not like Git CLI, just Git. He was a Git wizard. He could do, he knew how to do all of it. Um, and it was very, very cool. And I was very jealous. And it is on my list to do, but it's just not there yet. Um, but yeah, so we've wrapped up. I've done all the questions. Let me know if there was any questions you potentially would have answered differently, or if actually you just want to talk about one of them uh, any further. You know my details are there to reach out. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn or leave a comment below. And yeah, I am feeling confident. I, of course, will make another video shortly, hopefully shortly, um, with a potential positive outcome. I am feeling really positive about it. Um, you know when you just come away and you're like, mm, yeah, I feel like, I got on with them all right. Um, we were able to have a conversation and I feel like I answered their questions to the best that I could whilst giving quite, yeah. I just feel, it feels good. So fingers crossed. Uh, until next time, uh, I will see you then.